What's up, YouTube West Coast Swing fans? Do you love West Coast Swing as much as I do? Do you? Mm -hmm. You love it. Cool. I'm going to challenge you. This video, we're going to cover all the basic patterns that you need to know for West Coast Swing. If you're watching this channel in this video right now, you likely will know those basic patterns, but you might know someone that needs to learn them. So we're going to do a basic breakdown of the basic pushes, passes, and whips that everyone needs for West Coast Swing. So my challenge to you, please watch the video. You'll probably learn something, but my challenge is to share this with a friend who wants to learn West Coast Swing because this is the video for them. What's up, gang? My name is Brian B. And Miss Megan. We live in Louisville, Kentucky. We run a website called westcoastswingonline.com, the number one West Coast Swing video website in the world. Um, so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to break down all the basic patterns. We're going to make it really easy. So if you're new to West Coast Swing or you're trying to up, up, up your game, this is the video for you. Let's cover this real simply, and we're going to break everything down overall leaders and followers parts and the connections but let's give a quick overview there's only three base patterns we're going to teach you more than three in this video but three base patterns of west coast swing number one is a push sometimes called a sugar push or a push break where i basically push my partner away then we have what's called a side pass where the partner my partner is passing either my left or right side as the leader then we have something called a whip that's the first eight count pattern where the follower heads down the slot and then back to where they came from. So just a quick overview of West Coast Swing. We're going to look at this from this side. West Coast Swing is what we call a slotted dance. So imagine train tracks. Now, the follower, Miss Megan in this case, she owns the train tracks. It's my job to get out of the way and let her pass and get back in the way. So that's what we mean by a slotted dance. Now there's rumors how West Coast Swing became a slotted dance. Um, but one of the rumors was that it looks good on TV. So in this case, we're going to have this orientation and our slot's going to be running this way. First pattern we're going to break down is the, we're going to do about five or six of these, but the first one is the sugar push. This might be the, the first pattern you ever learn. By technical definition, it's actually called the push break, but you're going to hear a lot of teachers call it the sugar push. Me included, bad habit I got into years ago. So leader's part, Megan's going to walk through the followers part, but she'll narrate in just a sec. So walk, walk, triple step, triple step, right? So we're going to walk two small steps back for leaders, walk, walk. Then we have a triple step. That's three quick steps in two beats of music. Trip, always step forward. And then we have another triple step in place, a trip step. That last triple is called an anchor step. We'll discuss that in just a second. But leaders, we're going to walk back for one, two, we're going to triple three and four, we're going to triple five and six. One more time, we have walk, walk, triple step and anchor in place, tucking that right foot behind the left for the followers. All right, so followers, we are going to go forward, forward, together, together, step back, and then triple step. So if we did that again, we have one, two, triple for three, and back four, five, and six. So that is your base footwork for what we call the push break or the sugar push. Now, West Coast Swing has two different connections. We're going to address that right off the bat. Take an underhand grip, so sometimes we call this a pistol grip, um, where the leader's hand's underneath, the followers are locked over on top. Um, we're going to practice this connection. We have two connections. One is an away connection and one is a towards connection. Now, we don't want to swing ourselves away through our shoulders too much, but you want to almost stay upright like an H and use that crossbar to connect yourself away. So I'm one pillar of the H, Miss Megan's the other. This is the crossbar in the middle. And if we're good at this, we should be able to feel an away connection and a towards connection with minimal movement. So those are the two connections. We're going to begin with my right foot tucked behind my left, Megan's left foot behind her right. As I walk forward, I don't need to pull Megan with my hands. As I step back, that will initiate her moving down the slot for our sugar push. So things to uh, think about here. Leaders, we're gonna take two small steps. One, two. Followers, what are you thinking about here, Megan? Uh, uh, closing the distance. So on the first two steps, your job for the followers to close the distance. One, two, from here we triple step in place, 
three and leaders, this is a small step forward for count four because she's gonna run out of space and then we're gonna put a triple step at the end. We call this an anchor step because what's an anchor do, Miss Megan? It stays in place. It stays in place. We do this on the other side. This is your sugar push or push break. Oh, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. Oh, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. Cool beans. We're gonna work off of this sugar push and give you another cool pattern that works off of the same concept, off of this push break concept. We said there's three basic patterns, pushes, passes, and the whip where she goes down and back. So we're gonna give you another push type pattern. We call this a sugar tuck. Sugar tuck looks like this, pretty fun. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. Cool? So good news is the leaders have the exact same footwork. So leaders, it's that sugar push or push break footwork where we go back, back, together, together, forward, anchor in place, right? Making sure as a good habit, we tuck this foot behind to help initiate that away connection. The only thing we need to think about as the leaders is we're gonna raise this hand as we start back, we're gonna raise this to a mini high five, triple step, and then take this hand over your partner's head. So we'll cover that in a second but let's get the followers caught up. All right, so followers, half of your footwork is the same as the sugar push. We have forward, forward, together, together. Instead of stepping straight back, they're going to send us away. Now, we're going to do our anchor step or our last triple in a half circle for triple step. Okay, so if we did that again, one, two, triple, three, and away, four, five and six. Cool, there's the footwork leaders followers. Now, we like to do something called baby steps when we teach the arm connection because sometimes it's confusing to put the arms and the feet together. But what I wanna do here is let's just kinda stand a little closer. Take this hand leaders, we're gonna pull this up and let your fingers release to face this direction. So a good basic rule is Megan's fingers are gonna go to the sky, my fingers are gonna go the direction that I want her to turn. So just to practice the hands, I take this up, I point my fingers that direction, I got this kind of little cockeyed to my elbow here. I take this over her head and around, and then my hand's gonna end up on top. We're gonna fix that in a second. So that's the hand pass. So I take this up, around her head in a little mini circle, and drop it back down. We're gonna drop this always down to where our elbows and hands are on the same level. So if we add that to the footwork, we just use one hand. We go one, two, three, and four, five and six. That hand's gonna end up on top, so when you practice it again, you're gonna have to let go, go underneath, try it again. Any thoughts on the sugar tuck, Miss Megan? Uh, be very careful that you don't send your follower before four, and followers, don't go before your leader sends you. So, she's moving back on count four. Remember from the sugar push? One, two, three, and she goes back on count four. So leaders, when I do a sugar tuck, remember we said this is a push pattern, so all the rules stay the same. I want to only send her back with my left hand on count four, so I can't push too early. One, two, three, and don't push too early. As I step four, I'll reach just a little bit on count four. Anchor step. Let's look at it from the other side, and then we'll go on to our side passes. If we go too fast, you can always just rewind and watch at your own pace. We have one, two, three, and four five and six. So that is our sugar tuck. Also, things to keep in mind as we go through this, I'm always going to keep this foot tucked behind as a good basic rule at the end of each pattern, which is called an anchor, anchor step because it stays in place, right? We have one, two, three, and four anchor step away. So you want to make sure that that foot stays away for the followers and for the leaders. Cool. Before we go on the side passes, if you guys are liking this, we run a website called westcoastswingonline.com. There is a beginner page with all of our best resources for beginners. All the rest of your beginner patterns, some basic techniques, um, all the things that people, our students have found frustrating over the years. We've created resources to help you. They're all free on that page. We'll link that up. It's westcoastswingonline.com slash beginner dash resources. Don't worry about that. We'll link it up in the corner or the description below as we move on. So now we remember Megan owns the slot on a side pass. She's going to pass either to my left side or my right side. We're going to use the right side pass first. We're going to do it from this side. I'm going to explain why because 
it's going to work really good with your sugar tuck. So let's actually cover that now, and then we'll teach the right side pass. So you've just done your sugar tuck. And remember before I said this hand is on top for the leaders. Up to this point, it's been underneath, but it's on top. So we're going to use a right side pass to fix that hand. It's a cool combo, right? So let's talk... Um, Let's talk leader's footwork first, and I'm just going to do the footwork, then Megan's going to do the follower's footwork, otherwise we're going to cross each other up on camera. So leaders, I still have to walk back for two steps, but I need to also vacate the slot. So the easiest way, there's a bunch of different footwork, but the easiest one we've figured out after all these years is to go back and together. And at this point, my chest should be more or less facing this slot in front of me. So I still keep that back and together, right? Then I do my triple step, and I have to kind of do a quarter turn triple step and I'm going to step back in that slot before my anchor step triple in place. So if I gave it numbers, we'd have one, two, three, and four, five, and six. If I did it from the other side just because I'm here, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. That's your right side pass footwork for the leaders. All right, so followers, we still have our two walks forward like normal. We have forward, forward. Now, um, there are two different versions you can try for this. If you want a slightly easier version, you're going to go side, together, back, and then triple step. So let's do that on this side. Walk, walk, side, together, back, triple step. Once you get comfortable doing that, you're going to start to cross your feet. Walk, walk. Now, you remember those train tracks? You're going to step out on the rail so that you can cross your foot in front and then step back. Triple step. One more time, we have our walk, walk, step out on the rail, cross, back, triple step. And so Megan gave you two versions of the footwork. Again, the first one after teaching lots and lots of people for a long, long time. Um, the putting your feet together, the first version, is going to be the easier one, but the one that everyone else uses is the cross one. Um, so try the first one first and progress from there. Cool? So from here, if we take a traditional handhold leader, so this is my hand underneath, what's going to happen on one, two? We're going to practice these baby steps. Pull this hand up and look at your wristwatch. Just practice that. So I pull my hand up, wristwatch. So followers, you can talk about the follower's hand, but leader, I'm going to rotate my hand just like this. This is what's happening. So I can see my watch on my hand. Nothing else is going to change. It looks like weird stuff's going to go on. I just turn my hand over to look at my watch. Followers, you do not want to grip your partner's hand and vice versa. My Leaders, you don't want to do already. that. <laughs> because your hand is over top their uh, grip, it's kind of in this C cup. C. Okay? You're pretty much going to keep it like that as they go through their uh, transition into the looking at the watch. Cool. So watch how well this works. This is going to happen in the first two beats. So leaders, I have to step out of the way, right? My first two steps. As I look at my watch, one, two. From here, I should be looking at my watch. This allows Megan to pass on the three and four. We're back down. The hand comes down. Anchor step or my five and six. If I do it from this side, one, two, three, and four. One more time. Oh, one, two, three, and four five and six. So that is your right side pass. This is also called the underarm turn. So if you have another teacher and they call it an underarm turn, right side pass, it's kind of the same thing. It is the same thing. Um, so now if we go back to this side and we combine two of the, actually the three patterns we now know, we have a sugar push, right? We have a sugar tuck kind of working systematically. It's all the same. And then from here, leaders, I can lead the right side pass and it fixes my hand. So already, you're three patterns in and you can kind of mix and match these. Sugar push, sugar tuck, right side pass. Bingo. So there's three patterns already. So we've done a couple of different pushes. We've done one of the two basic passes. Let's cover the other pass. If we have a right side pass, we also have to have a Left side a left pass. side pass. I'm going to cover the left side pass from this side. Um, the confusing thing about the pass for the leaders, and I remember back when I was learning this dance a long time ago, back in the 90s, is the pass has to do with not the side of the slot that I step out to, 
but the side that my follower passes on. So my left side pass passes on my left side. My right side pass passes on my right side. So if we did this this way, right, this is a little, let's wrap our heads around this. This is the right side pass. Even though I'm stepping out to the left, it is a right side pass. Cool? If I want to do a left side pass, I step out to this side, my right side, so it, the, my partner can pass the left side of me. Cool? That's tricky. So if that's confusing to you, it was to me. It's still a little bit to me. So leaders, this is what your left side pass looks like. Oh, one, two, three, and four. Do it again. Oh, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. So I like to teach this. Uh, to keep things simple, leaders, think of this like your sugar push, right? In my sugar push, I go back, back, together, together, forward, anchor in place. If I do that while rotating, I'm going to get my left side pass. So I'm rotating out of the slot, back, back, together, together, forward, right? I still had to rotate, triple in place, also known as my anchor step. If I do that again, we have back, back together, together, forward, triple in place. If I did it with numbers, I'd have one, two, three, and four, five, and six. That's your left side pass forward for leaders. Miss Megan? Good news. Your footwork doesn't change from your right side pass. So uh, I'll do it both versions one more time. We have forward, forward, side together, back, triple in place, and then the one that's crossing, one, two, three, and four, five and six. So the footwork's the same for both passes. It will feel different, would you agree? Yeah, it, this one, the right side pass is gonna feel a little bit more curved, I guess, because your arm is going over, and this one's not going to feel quite as yeah. insistent. Insistent, that's good. It's more gradual, the left side pass gradual. So we maintain this connection. Again, I keep my elbow kind of locked in nice and tight. Leaders I have, oh, one two, three, and four, five, and six. We do it again, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. And if we're kind of trying to develop good habits and make this work, let me say this, the left side pass, not the coolest pattern you're gonna do. However, it's going to get us to things like our inside turn. So we need to master the left side pass to get to the other cooler stuff. But while we're doing that, Here's what we need to focus on if we want to kind of level up our game. We want to maintain this away connection the entire time. So one of the things, one of the drills that we use for beginners is to practice keeping this connection leaders, moving closer to your hand and moving away. Followers moving closer to your hand. So we're maintaining that connection because the spacing as we do this left side pass between us might ebb and flow. We don't want to get too army. So we're going to keep this connection in our hands through our elbows, and we're going to allow our bodies to get closer. So there's your drill to practice that. If it's done well, perfect job, Miss Megan. If it's done well, we should be able to keep the connection in our arms the entire time. Cool? And I said I wouldn't do this on the video, but we're going to jump right. Since we're talking about the left side pass, we're going to jump right into the inside turn. This is probably <laughs> the most technically difficult step so far, all the footwork, although complicated, is very doable, not physically hard. The turn is. Good news for the leaders, the footwork is my basic left side pass footwork that I just did, right? This boring left side pass, it's the same footwork while I lead the turn, right? So let's have Miss Megan break down the turn. Leaders, you get a break for a minute or two, and we'll talk about the lead in just a second. All right, this is how I teach the turn. This is not how you're really going to do your feet for your turn. So you're still going to have your two walks forward. Walk, walk. And then I say you're going to do three half turns. Half, half, a little over half. And then triple step. Okay? In all, when you're really doing this, you want your feet to be closed a little bit better. So walk, walk. You want to think about closing your feet as well as they can to go through that turn. The bigger your, your steps are, the harder that turn is. So one more time, we have walk, walk. We have turn, 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 and triple step. And again, a lot of the stuff we're teaching on this is definitely a means to an end, right? Our goal is to get people up and moving and dancing and they're, without messing up any of the fundamentals that will take place later. So these are all fundamental things. But again, if we go to that, we'll link this up again. Um, our beginner resource page. We break down all the little techniques, but in this, we're trying to give you the easiest ways that we teach our beginners 
that we've taught our beginners for the last 15 plus years, right? The same way over and over, easy ways to do it. So if we think about this, the beginning of this turn, we need to do what's called a prep or a prepare the, the follower for a turn. So leaders, I'm going to dance one, and on two, I have to send that hand away from me. Not so far away, but the feeling might even be a little bit of an in out. And what am I doing? I'm preparing or communicating to Megan that she needs to prepare her body to turn. So if you want to talk about that real quick, when you feel this prep. So when we're prepping, all we're doing, we're not going to turn our whole body with everything. If you make everything go together, you look like a robot. Okay. So you're just going to open a little bit more than usual. Like if you were going to throw a baseball, your arm would go back. So, and leaders, it's my job to communicate that because if I don't, she just has a left side pass, right? So I'm going to prep this slightly in, slightly out. Slightly in, slightly out. Now she's prepared to turn. Now from here, let's go back to baby steps. Let's do our baby steps. Leaders, take your uh, wristwatch, turn it to the sky. Allow your fingers to stay down kind of in this rock star grip. Rotate around her head and drop it back. So again, wristwatch to the sky rotate around our head, back down. So once we've prepped, we have one prep, two, my wristwatch turns to the sky, three and four, five and six. If I do it from this side, oh, one, two, three and four, five and six. Always hunting for that anchor step and that connection away. So quick recap, we have done a sugar push off of our push. We took this into a sugar tuck. Then we did our right side pass to change the hand, right? We did our left side pass. And then from our left side pass, we did our inside turn. So we have all those, how many patterns is that? One, two, three, four. There's five patterns, five patterns. But there's only two basics that we worked on, right? The push, which gave us a push break, right? Sugar push. Then we had it, so this is our sugar push, right? We're, this is still a push, right? The sugar tuck is still a push. Same base pattern, right? Then we did two versions, actually three versions of the side pass. We did our right side pass. We also did our left side pass, right? Then we did our left side pass with a turn for the followers. But that's still the second base pattern, right? Pushes is one, passes is another. The third basic pattern that we need to learn overall, these are all basic patterns, but the third fundamental pattern, if you will, is the whoosh, the whip. So in a whip, this is kind of a mind meld. This is an eight count pattern, right? So walk, walk, triple step, walk, walk, triple step. So we counted it one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, and eight. Looks like this. Oh, one, two, three, and four of five, six, seven, and eight. One more time. Walk, walk, triple step, walk, walk, triple step. So this one's tricky because it is an eight count pattern. Um, so let's cover the leader's footwork a lot like the right side pass to begin, right? Here's my slot. I have one, two to allow Megan to pass by me on three and four, three and four. Instead of going in the middle of the slot, I'm going to step to the other rail. If I did it from behind one, two, three and four, I step. So the rails are kind of along both feet and there's room for Miss Megan. Cool. One more time this way. We have one two, three, and four. Let's get the followers caught up at this point, and then we'll finish the leader's footwork off. All right, so followers, you're going to step one step forward, and we're going to turn backwards. So we have forward, turn, back. Let's just do that much one more time. We have forward, back. Now, at this point, you're going to step back together. Let's do that again. We have forward, turn, back together. If I did it from this side, one, two, three, and. Cool. You want to take count four? Line us up. Oh, you did four. Ha, huh, sorry. So we'll, we'll add count four. One, <laughs> two, three, and you're going to step forward for count four. One more time. We have one, two, three, and Boom, oh, now we're even. We want equality. That's equality. <laughs> but there is a reason she stopped in that position. We'll actually talk about that here in a second. So let's just get that far. We have um, one, two, three, and four. Cool beans? So what do I have to do to lead this? 
So leaders, I need to take this hand. Yeah, we're good. I'm going to take her forward, maintain that connection, and then I'm going to use a little hook to make sure she goes back. So we need to maintain that connection, right, forward, and then hook that back. At this point, I'm going to take my right arm and pick her underneath, pick her up underneath her left shoulder. So I'm also going to show this to her to say, hey, here's where we're coming. One, two. Those are the first two beats. Now, let's can, can we talk about this arm? Let's go from this side. Talk about what goes on with that arm for the follower. Yes. So I noticed as I'm teaching this throughout the years that the way I was telling people how to do the arm was not how I did my arm. So I am seeing his arm here. As he starts to lead me, I'm just lifting my arm enough to go over top of his. Okay. So as you're turning, just make sure it's up enough that it can sneak over top. Cool. So common mistake, if that arm stays down, what does it look like, Miss Megan? One, two, super awful claustrophobic. It cool feels beans. weird too. Yep. So from here, and I'm going to stay on this side because I can narrate a little bit better the camera. Let's do the first four beats. We go one, two. Now leaders, she's going to go back together forward. So my arms have to go three and four. So again, three and four is what's going to happen with my arms. Let's put that all together oh. from this side. I would have moved. Oh, one two, three, and four. Check mark here. Megan is stepping between my feet. I am over my left foot. She's looking over my right shoulder. If we do this straight down the mouth of the camera, one, two, three, and four. So if you notice, whose slot is it? Megan's Mine. slot, right? So she's still in the slot because I have to get out of the way again to let her get back by. Cool? There's your first four beats. So let's cover to count four for the leaders and let's go on for the rest of the four for the leaders. So leaders, we have one, two, three, and four. From here, I want to step a small step down the rail on count five. I'm on my right foot. I step back in for six. Then I have my anchor step, seven and eight. If I do that again, we have one, two, three, and four. Walk five, walk six, triple seven and eight. I'll give you some rhythms. We have walk, walk, triple step, and walk, walk, triple step. There's your leaders for work. Miss Megan. All right, so followers, we have one, two, three, and four. At this point, we're going to turn backwards for five, step back for six, and then anchor for seven and eight. If we did that again, one, two, three, and four, turn five, step six, triple full step. Brilliant. So if we connect all of this together, we have one, two, three, and four. Now at this point, I need to flip Megan back that direction, right? So my right arm is going to slightly contract to send her that way on counts five, six. Megan's going to walk back, back, anchor, step, right? So checkpoint number, best way to think about this, two beat increments. One, Two. Are we in the right position? Megan's arms up. I have her on the back. Cool. Three and four. Three and four. Am I across the slot? Is she stepped between my feet? Check mark. Five, six. She should pass me. Five, six. I need to get back in the slot. We're connected. What's the last two beats of every West Coast swing pattern? Anchor step. Cool. Let's do it from the other side. And this is your last base pattern. Oh, one, two, three and four of five, six, seven, and eight. That is your whip. So to quickly recap, anything else on the whip? Any other? Um, just staying connected for the follower. So meaning as soon as this hand is on your back, your uh, objective is to connect away, which means into that hand, as long as it is on your back. So if you're watching straight through and you saw Megan not do count four of the whip, she did one, <laughs> two, three, and. That's because that is the end connection point in the whip. This gets a little advanced, but this is really what goes on. We have one, two, three, and. That's another good checkpoint. Three, and. My left foot's free. Megan's right foot's free. We step across for four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you really want to level up your whip. One, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, and eight. So quick recap, and then I've got a free gift for you. Um, we had our sugar push or push break. We had our sugar tuck. These are all the beginner patterns you need to know. We had a right side pass. 
That's probably the coolest beginner pattern. Then we had the left side pass. That's probably the least cool beginner <laughs> pattern. But this is probably the hardest beginner pattern, the inside turn, and then the whip, it starts to get complicated and yet more fun. If you really want to level up your game in West Coast Swing um, and learn more, more interesting patterns that are at the appropriate level as you move from beginner to intermediate, we have an awesome website called westcoastswingonline.com. Head on over to the website, enter your email address on the first page. Reply to the email you get when you sign up and we will personally answer your questions, anything you need to know. Thanks gang, share the video with a friend and we'll see you again on the dance floor hopefully soon.